Hi everyone and uh, welcome back. So here we are and we are going to talk about Next.js with the SQLize ORM. Okay. So in previous couple of videos, we have already discussed about Next.js with the type ORM, which is currently the most popular, but still people are using SQLize and I will not say that SQLize is old. You can also use SQLize. And if you love to write code with SQLize, then you can go ahead with SQLize with Next.js. Okay. SQLize also has an integration with all different kind of relational database and we can use a Postgres, MySQL and all the other set of database. So what we what we are changing here is from Next.js with type ORM we are saying Next.js with the SQLize. So there is a SQLize CLI, we will write a SQLize migration, SQLize seeders and all these things. Okay. It has a little bit different setup than what we have in the type ORM, I mean the entity uh, whatever you are writing. That will be a little different, but the concept is still same. It is also going to expose us the repositories in the services and we are just going to call the, the services. So here we are and what we are doing is we created a copy of our previous uh, Postgres project with the Next.js and uh, we are going to replace only the few parts here and we will convert this into the Next.js with the SQLize. We have already discussed enough on this so I will not be talking about uh, the basic building blocks like how it is structured. It is the same uh, Next.js project okay having the services, modules, test and all and we also have a docker compose setup so you should be able to run the applications on the container. I mean you can run uh, you can create only a single container like database container and rest you can run locally. What you need to do in your .env file, you can just provide localhost instead of container name. If you are running everything on the container, then here you need to put the container name like Postgres, MySQL and all. If you are running only your uh, database inside a container and your APIs you can run locally because it's local development you are doing, then you can just change it to the localhost and do npm run start, that's it, okay. So what we need for the SQLize, uh, if you have already seen uh, how SQLize look like then SQLize requires a SQLize RC file, okay. First of all we will create that and uh, in the package.json we require few set of modules like SQLize and uh, SQLize CLI, these modules you need and with Next.js. What I said is SQLize doesn't have a good support with the TypeScript so SQLize TypeScript is an additional module which we have to use to make it more compatible with uh, the Next.js because Next.js is all about TypeScript okay. So these three highlighted modules are the modules which we need and rest we need a SQLize RC file. So we'll create that one that, that is a simple uh, file which we need to create in the root of the project. So we can create one. So it is dot SQLize RC, SQLize RC, and what it will contain is the configuration. Uh, if you remember, with the type ORM, we were using or type ORM config.ts, ORM config.ts. Similarly, this is the file SQLize RC, which will tell where is the migrations, where is the seeder, and where is the configuration from where. You can you can get the configuration about database okay so here you can actually create your custom path like in the src i will have some database db folder where i will have seeders folder migrations folder and config.ts okay so let's create a database folder here inside database what we are going to do is you can actually do one more thing is you can actually do sqlize in it That will also create all these structures because SQLize in it will read this fold, this file and will create a seeders folder, migration folder and config.ts for us. Uh, let's give it a try. So I have already installed SQLize CLI globally npm install minus the SQLize CLI that will give me a freedom to run SQLize in it command. Okay. And now I can see in the database we have these folders migrations empty, seeders empty, config.ts. Now our config.ts is fine. We have like based on the environment, you will be exposing these things. Like environment is development. Then your SQLize 
uh, the ORM is going to pick this configuration. But this is not enough. We are writing TypeScript and we can we wanted to segregate it based on the environment and we are going to get these environment variables from process.env. Right, so first of all, let's wipe this out. And we are going to get the configurations from .env. So this is how we initialize .env module. And we can just say .env.config. Config will by default look into .env file and we'll put all those things into our process.env. Okay. Rest what we can do is simply module.exports and we can expose our configuration. So the same JSON file, keeping the same structure, we can just expose all these configurations. The configuration is based on the environments. Like for development, it will pick this configuration. Configuration is kind of same. So if you are passing node env development, then it will pick this configuration. So let's go to our .env file and see what all things we have. So we have node env, which is development. So it will pick the development configurations. Now db host, port, user, password, all are our environment variables, which will be picked up by this .env config module. Okay. So seeders, migrations, that is fine. We will, we will take care about migrations later. Now coming to our package.json where we are going to use the SQLite CLI to run the migrations, to create the migrations, to create the database, drop the database. Because the, the, the main advantage of using these ORMs is for uh, migrations, for seeders, for populating the data. That's my personal uh, use case. I mean, I rather write the raw SQL queries and then use these ORMs to write migrations and seeders. Okay, so now we have our setup properly. Now let's go to our package.json and in the package.json, we already have mentioned some scripts because this is a boilerplate which I picked up from my previous project and I have added all the commands like db migrate, db drop and db create. Okay, so db migrate will uh, run the, uh, create the migration. I mean, run the migrations, db create will create the database, seed will seed some data if you have a seeders created. Okay, let's uh, say, I think I already have this container running. Okay, this container is running, you just do docker compose up. Your uh, postgres container will be up because we are using dialect as a postgres here in the env. Here, if you see Postgres, this can be MySQL, Postgres, any other RDBMS database. SQL, I support all these things. Now, what I will do is based on the package.json structure, I can run all these commands. Let's say uh, I'm running db migrate, npm run db migrate. So it will look into the, the migration folder, which is configured in the SQL RC. Okay. And based on that, it will check, okay, do we have the migrations created? If not, it will not execute any. But migration is just a simple structure. Uh, the objective of migration is just to create tables, alter tables, uh, create relationship between tables using raw SQL queries. Okay, so we can actually create that on the fly. Once we decide, okay, what all entities we are going to have. Now, the next stop is Initializing the MySQL database connection with the help of post uh, with the help of SQLize. Okay, so what we are doing is uh, let's create our uh, database module. So that we will do inside a core folder. So inside core, we can have, I mean, this is a database uh, migration configuration. Here we can have a database module. And database module will have uh, like providers, database config, database module and all. We can use the same database config here. So inside core database, we have, I mean, you can have the same configurations. One configuration I exposed outside. Same configuration also you can use here. 
because the code looks like same what we have is based on the environment we have our configuration which our postgres connection will read for dialect and all these properties okay so what we can do is we can copy the same configuration or you can point out to the same configuration now database module we have to create so i will just say database.module.ts and i am going to create one database service let's say or just a database provider okay now inside database provider we are going to initialize our database connection okay so uh, this is a custom provider we are going to do what we will do is export const so this is from the documentation nothing from my side this is how uh, nest.js will connect to the database using the sqlize database providers and here we will just use the provide is our sqlize so here the provider is let's say sqlize is the provider this is the database name and this is a this is going to be the dynamic initialization so use factory and async and inside this we are going to provide all our configuration okay so here this is a use factory function it is complaining okay we can get the first of all let's import the sqlize sqlize from sqlize typescript sqlize typescript is a module which we have imported and inside this configuration uh, because we already have our database configuration which we have imported right so we can just say based on the environment process dot 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 in we, we can initialize for development this is the config for the production this is the config here we can say the let config of type uh, null for now and the config is getting initialized right we can have the constants where we can define all these constants for each and every environment so these constants are nothing but uh, a simple placeholders like for database i have i can actually create a const file here database.constant.ts and i can just specify all my constants this is sqlize and all the different environment we are going to have and we can import all these constants from that file add all missing imports okay and we can ignore this particular this is the key or we can actually use it as saying development productions and test database config so we have to import the database here i mean we already have a database config file so we can get this from the database config so database config contains all the, the details about database so let's import this import database config from our database config.ts how we are exporting this let's see this is module dot exports here we don't need this particular style of export const of database and i can say simple export const database config i am importing it inside a provider now this will be fine 
undefined database config okay should be database config just uh, just fix this okay now this is just our simple provider we have created okay forget about uh, this this error i mean we, we can just ignore this now what we need to do is we need to pass this as a provider inside a module okay so provider we can create a database module this is our database module and we can import the database provider from database.provider.ps okay so this is our database module now this database module you can use wherever you need a database connection okay so if you see this database has a lot of other things also in the database provider first of all we got the connection we got the config object so that is not the end of the story here we need to once we got the config object we can actually create a sqlize object by calling the sqlize So this is equalize and it is accepting a config as an argument and you can add a models like we haven't talked about what about the models the, the entities we are going to have to sequelize dot add models and whatever the models you have just pass them in an array and return sequelize from here that's the end of the story and if you wanted to synchronize the database based on your changes we are doing then we can actually do sqlize.sync but that's not for the production we are going to use migration so await sqlize.sync will sync, uh, synchronize your entities with the database so if you have changed the column if you do sqlize sync it will automatically uh, update your database table with the change you have done in the entities okay so this is about database interface now in the next video let's create a uh, our controllers and services and consume uh, one particular entity let's say the blog post okay uh, so let's see that in the next video uh, thanks everyone